Hello and welcome back to another Duncan Codes. My name is Duncan. Today we are continuing with the University of Helsinki's massive open online course and we are kicking off with object as object variables. Objects may contain references to objects. Let's keep working with people and add a birthday to the person class. A natural way of representing a birthday is to use the date class. We could use the class name date, but for the sake of avoiding confusion with the similarly named existing Java class, we will use simple date here. So here we've got our class created called simple date. Uh, it's got three private integers, day, month, and year. Then we've got our constructor. We know it's a constructor because it's got the capital S there. Uh, and then we've got three methods that get uh, the day, month, and year. Then our override to the string dot two string method. Since we know the birthday, there is no need to store that age of the person as a separate object variable. The age of the person can be inferred from their birthday. Let's assume that the class person now has the following variables. Let's create a new person constructor that allows for setting the birthday. So here we've got another constructor which takes a name and a simple date and then assigns those to the variables as appropriate. Along with the constructor above, we could give the person another constructor where the birthday was given as integers. So we could separate each uh, part in our call to the constructor with a comma. So int, comma, month, comma, year, comma. The constructor receives as parameters the different parts of the date. They are used to create a date object. And finally, the reference to the date is copied as the value of the object variable birthday. Let's modify the two string method of the person class so that instead of age, the method returns the birthday. Here we go. So we've got our birthday being returned here. Let's see how the updated person class works. So we've got a simple date being created here. Uh, we've got the class, the object, and then the reference to the constructor. We've got two people being created. Uh, Mohammed is receiving a date, which is this one here. And Pascal is rece receiving a date, which has been passed as part of his constructor. And then we've got the system outs here. Now a person object has object variables, name and birthday. The variable name is a string, which itself is an object. The variable birthday is a simple date object. Both variables contain a reference to an object. Therefore, a person object contains two references. In the image below, weight and height are not considered at all. So here we've got Mohammed. The first reference is this one here. And then we've got the second reference, which is to the date as well. So the main program is connected to two person objects by strands. A person has a name and a birthday. Since both variables are objects, these attributes exist at the other ends of the strands. Birthday appears to be a good extension to the person class. Earlier, we noted that object variable age can be calculated with birthday, so it was removed. In the section above, we use our own class, simple date, to represent date because it's suitable for illustrating and practicing the operation of objects. If you want to handle dates in your own programs, it's worth reading about the pre-made date Java class, local date. It contains a significant amount of functionality that can be used to handle dates. For example, the current date can be used with existing local date class in the following manner. So we've got our object being created and they're using local date dot now. So that will get the current date. Then they are using the get year, get month and get day uh, methods of the now object. So you can see that here and they're being assigned to their appropriate variables. And then we've got a system out which will print out um, the date. Aha, the biggest pet shop. Here we go. So we have two classes, person and pet, are included in the exercise template. Each person has one pet. Modify the public string dot two string method of the person class so that the string it returns tells the pet's name and breed in addition to the person's own name. Okay, so we are going to find the person class, which is right here. Oops. Um, we are then going to go to the two string method, which is right here at the bottom. And we've got return this dot name, so Leo. And then what we need to do is just update this a little bit. So we're going to add in a plus, uh, some double brackets, a comma and a space. So that's taken care of this first bit here. And then we can add in friend called. And then it's going to be the pet name. So presumably 
we should be able to oh, okay so it's just going to be plus pet and then it says that she's a golden retriever so let's have a little look they're the person details have they created a pet object private pet pet oh, okay so that is the pet object so let's just double check and see what we've got in the pet class so we've got string get name and string get breed so the first thing we do is get name then we need some more um string literal so we'll do plus space and then we're going to do pet dot get breed plus what's that have a look and see what we get back for that. Hey, there we go. So that one was passed nice and easy. So, so at the top here, you can see that we've got private pet pet. So that's initializing um, data. Basically, we, we can use this later. So it's sort of first part of a new initialization so this is it, this is basically what it is um, but we're just doing this left part uh, rather than initializing the entire um, object so we've got private pet pet and then we're able to use the pet object so pet dot and then we can use uh, get breed get name etc there we go so let's give that a little save let's um, make sure we've got our point which we do excellent so object of same type as method parameter. We continue working with the person class. We'll continue working with the person class. We recall the persons know their birthdays. So here's our updated class now. We would like to compare the ages of two people. The comparison can be done in multiple ways. We could, for instance, implement a method called public int ages years for the person class. In that case, the comparison would happen in the following manner. So here we've got our um, person class we are we have two objects so we've got Mohammed and Pascal and we're saying they're equal to new people there's our constructor and here's our condition our test so if Mohammed.ages years is greater than Pascal.ages years system out dot print and then they are using the get name methods of the Mohammed and Pascal objects we're now going to learn a more object orientated way to compare the ages of two people we are going to create a new method, boolean, older than, uh, person compared, for the person class. It can be used to compare a certain person object to the person supplied as the parameter based on their ages. Let's just make this a bit bigger. There we go. So this is what we're looking at now. So we've got our object initialization. Then we've got if Mohammed dot older than Pascal. So the older than method will take a person object so you can see here just as we did before with payment card card this time we're comparing person um, and we can change that name to whatever we want to call it we are providing that name here so the person is pascal and it will return true or false depending on who's older the program above asks if muhammad is older than pascal the method older than returns true if the object that is used to call the method is older than the object given as the parameter and false otherwise. So the object, you can imagine that that's uh, Muhammad. We call the older than method and we pass in object given as a parameter and Pascal is the object that we use. And then we've got our else. So if it doesn't meet this criteria, it must meet this one. And then uh, we've got this printout here. The above program asks if Muhammad is older than Pascal. In practice, we call the older than method of the object that matches Muhammad, which is referred to by the variable Muhammad. The reference Pascal matching the object for Pascal is given as the parameter to that method. The program prints Muhammad is older than Pascal. The method older than receives a person object as the parameter. More precisely, the variable that is defined as the method parameter receives a copy of the value contained by the given variable. That value is a reference to an object in this case. The implementation of the method is illustrated below. 
Note that the method may return a value in more than one place. Here, the comparison has been divided into multiple parts based on the years, the months, and the days. So it's quite a big method, isn't it? Um, so this is the class. We've got our method here, which finishes down here. So we've got quite a bit going on here. So this is the first section, which compares the years. What have we got? So if own year is less than compared year, return true. If own year is greater, return false. If they have the same birth year, then it compares the months. Uh, and then if it has the same birth year and month, it compares the days. So it's progressively um, checking further through that information. Let's pause for a moment to consider abstraction, one of the four principles of object-oriented programming. The idea behind abstraction is to conceptualize the program code so that each concept has its own clear responsibilities. When viewing the solution above, however, we notice that the comparison functionality would be better placed inside the simple date class instead of the person class. We'll create a method called public boolean before, and then that's going to take the uh, data type of simple date and then compared to the class simple date. The method returns the value true if the given date as the parameter is after the date of the object whose method is called. So what they're saying is that this method doesn't make sense to be in the person class because it's not really directly to do with the person. So uh, things directly to do with the person are uh, attributes and methods about them. So for example, um, their hair color, their eyes, their height, their weight, sex, all those sorts of things. So if you are working on those variables, then yes, all of those methods would belong in there. But this is more to do with dates. So it makes sense to move it into their simple date class. So even though the object variables year, month, and day are encapsulated, we can read their values by writing compared dot variable name. This is because a private variable can be accessed from all the methods contained by that class. Notice that the syntax here matches calling some object method. Unlike when calling a method, we refer to a field of an object, so the parentheses that indicate a method call are not written. So let's have a look at this bit first. So at the top here, we've got our private ints. Um, and encapsulated um, encapsulated variables are accessible anywhere within that class. So these three, although they're private, they can be accessed by any of these methods, but you wouldn't be able to access them from a different class. So say, for example, you wanted to access them from the person class, you wouldn't be able to see them. The only way that you would be able to manipulate these this data is by using getters and setter methods. So here we've got, what have we got here? Oh, I might go and calling a method. Oh yeah, so an example of how to use the methods. So here we've got simple dates. So we've got date one, date two, date three, date four. So that's the constructor from up here, isn't it? That one. Then we've got, and then we're just saying whether D1 is greater or less than D2. And then they're calling the before method. So they renamed the method to before. Did they rename it to before? Yes, there you go. So they renamed it to before and they're saying D1 dot before D2 and it will return true or false depending on whether it is true or false. Let's tweak the method older than of the person class so that from here on out, we make use of the comparison functionality that date objects provide. So we've got this person class now, which is going to be making use of the simple date class. So if this dot birthday dot before, so we're using that um, simple date class method and then compared dot get birthday and it'll return true or return false. So that's part of the beauty of object oriented programming is that you can use these different classes to achieve different outcomes. And when you're working with the code, you should to a degree know where everything is because your classes should be appropriately named and also everything contained within that class should be to do with the class name. So for example, we've got a person class with only bits to do with a person, and then we've got the simple date class, which only has methods that manipulate dates. So here we've got our next exercise, comparing apartments, it's a three-parter, which is great. So in the estate agent's information system, an apartment that is on sale is represented by an object that is instantiated from the following class. So we have got public class apartment with rooms, squares, price per square. Oh, that must be the square meters, how big it is. 
and then the cost per square meter. We have our constructor. We know it's a constructor again because it's the same name as the class and the first letter is a capital. It takes three parameters, rooms, squares, and price square, price per square, sorry. Your task is to create a few methods that can be used to compare apartments that are being sold. Create a method public boolean larger than apartment compared that returns true if the apartment object whose method is called has a larger total area than the apartment object that is being compared. An example of how the method should work is here. Very cool. Oh, this is going to be quite fun. Right, I'm going to move this over here out of the way. And let's close. Actually, what's the name of the one that we're doing now? Oh, comparing apartments. There we go. So let's close that. And then open this new package and see what we've got. So we've got a main and we've got our apartment class. Our main. OK, so we've got a little bit of code in there. That's jolly good. Right, let's move that to one side. And so we are going to need to create that method. Which was or which is sorry, called um, public. So PU and tab is the shortcut for that. It is public boolean uh, larger than. And we're going to pass a data type of apartment. Call that compared. And then there we go. So we can return false for now, just so it gets rid of the error. And then we need to do our comparison. So the comparison is going to be quite similar to the comparison that they were showing us through with the uh, person example. So let's try something simple. So if this dot squares is less than compared dot oh, squares, whoops, what have I done? This dot squares is less than that. We will return and then let's return out. I think I might have got that the wrong way around. Let's have a look. So I'm just going to copy the system outs they've given us into here. Uh, and it actually tells us what the output should be, which is quite nice. So that's returned false, which is correct. And then the other one's returned true. So that actually seems like we've got that first bit done. That was actually quite nice and easy. I wonder if we could use the ternary operator there. Let's have a look. So let's see. So it was return first, and then this dot squares. Uh, compared squares. And then we need the question mark. Ooh. And the first one is, is that if it returns true? Uh, so that will be true. And then false. There we go. Let's get rid of that. And let's just see if that actually still gives us the same result or if I've got the true and the false the wrong way around. True. Ah, oh, yep, got them the wrong way around. So that should be false. That should be true. Let's run it again. Cool. So just to, uh, as a bit of a sort of reminder of the ternary operator, this is the condition that we're evaluating. And then this is what we will return if it's true, uh, if it's false. And then this is what we return if it's true. It's quite a nice little way to um, to get simple comparisons done or logic checks done on, on one line. You can nest ternary operators as well, but we definitely won't be doing that today. Uh, right, let's have a look at this next bit, price difference. Create a method public int price difference apartment that returns the price difference of the apartment object whose method was called and the apartment object received as the parameter. The price difference is the absolute value of the difference of prices Prices can be calculated by multiplying the price per square by the number of squares. An example of how this method should work. OK, let us pinch this. Put that there. There we go. Okie dokes. Right, so let's create our method. So it's going to be public. Oh, this is returning the difference, isn't it? So it'll be uh, public int price difference. And then the same as before, it's going to receive an apartment object. So public int 
price difference and apartment compared and then go and then we'll just return zero for now let's have a look we are going to need the price of the current object and the price of the compared object and they said that we could create uh, we can create that ourselves by multiplying the squares by the price per square okay so let's have a look at creating some ints so int um price int compared price and do you know what? i could put that on one line there we go and then we can say that price is equal to and it will be this dot price per square times this dot squares we need the compared price and that's going to be uh, compared dot so let's say prints per square oh, i won't change it um but there you go prints per square times compared dot squares And then we need to return the absolute zero. So maths has a, or the math class has a method called um, absolute. So to use it, do ABS and it would be price minus compared price. So it might ask us to import this, import, there we go. Now, so if we have a look at the top here, we've got math.abs and then we've got the return there. So let us give that a run and see what we get back so seven one seventy one thousand six hundred and thirty five thousand four hundred so we're cooking on gas that's um all working pretty nicely right let us have a look at the third part then Write a method called public boolean more expensive than um, and the same details pass that returns true if the apartment object whose method is called is more expensive than the apartment object being compared an example of how that will work is below so let us pinch this so i'm just going to press Control a and then shift alt and f on my keyboard just to automatically line that up so it's looking all nice and then let's go in and add our new boolean method so boolean more expensive than, and then we are going to type apartment compared. Okay, so let's write this out quite roughly to begin with. And then we'll go back over and see if we can make it a bit better. We'll refactor the code. Right, so we need to compare prices, don't we? So let's see, write a method public boolean that returns true if the apartment whose object method is Called is more expensive than the apartment object being compared. Okay, so we're going to need to work out the price per square foot or squares for each of the um, apartments, won't we? So I'm thinking maybe we could do method that will work out the prices of those and then return that data to this method. In fact, Right, so let's do it this way. So current apartment. So we're going to create a, is it an int or a double? Oh, int. Uh, int current apartment. And that will say that that is equal to this dot squares times uh, this dot price per square. So we've got that saved. We'll do another one, which is compared. So in compared apartment is equal to compared dot squares times oops compared dot price per square why do i put prints okay let's refactor that uh, control r on the keyboard isn't it for refactor so price per square there we go uh, awesome right let's put our semicolon on the end there so we've got that so now we can return and say turn current 
at greater than compared at. Give that a run because that will return either true or false depending on you know whether it is or isn't. So let's have a look back over here. So we got rid of all of our errors. Um, we know what the output should be because it says here. So let's give it a run and see what we get back. So what have we got? So it's the first ones we're looking for, isn't it? False and true. So that looks actually pretty good. We could put these two lines in their own method, but I think probably for this, it would make it a bit more complicated than it needs to be. So we could pass the apartment in and we'd still need a place to store those in variables. So actually this is, this I think is absolutely fine. So let's give that a run. We could turn that into a ternary operator as well. So very similar to this. Let's submit that. Actually, let's add this ter the ternary in as well. So we've got that. It's always good to experiment with different code, isn't it? So what I'll do, what I'm going to do is find bash. Where's bash? There it is. And we'll add this on. And then we'll do another commit saying that we refactored it and added the ternary operator. But of course, you don't have to add that if you don't want to. So git commit m completed part five uh, exercise 11 and then git push you and then what we'll do is just okay that and then we'll add the ternary in so let's see so we can say return I suppose we don't really need to because we've kind of proved that this works about the ternary, but good practice, I suppose. There we go. So let's just test it again. Make sure we get the same printout. I reckon what we could probably do is maybe put these bits into here. So let's see if we can put that there and that there. And let's get rid of these and give it another run and make sure we still get true false as our first top, top two options. There we go. So we do. So we've been able to refactor that to one line. So now we can actually update our git hub. Uh, so git add git commit refactored more expensive than to use. Well, oh, I can't remember how to spell ternary. Let's see, just open it up on a different tab. Oh yeah, it is that way, cool. Uh, to use ternary. There we go, and then we can git push u. And then what I'll do is if we go to our GitHub, go to our repositories, uh, we've got University of Helsinki here, we can see obviously as you know now we've got all of our commits so 20 seconds ago so here we've got the refactored to ternary so we can see the red lines here so this is what the code originally was and then you can see that we've refactored that to this one green line so you can see what the code was and what we changed it to and you can do that on all sorts of in fact all of the projects are up here so you can see how someone's re, um, how someone's changed a file with their commit so if we click on any of these random, uh, randomly, we can see that we had this line in here, which was replaced by these two lines. There was that, which was replaced by this. And like I say, you can, you can do that on all sorts of different things. Any projects really that you come across, you can do that on. That's quite cool. Close that. So we've got that one done. That's excellent. Let's close this down. Middle, middle, middle. There it is. And let's see what we've got here. Let's uh, hopefully, have we finished that one? Yeah, that one's finished. Let's give that a refresh. Boom. And now we are comparing the equality of projects. And goodness, we're, not, we're only really slightly over halfway. So this is a massive section, which is great. Uh, so while working with strings, we learned that strings must be compared using the equals method and this is how it's done. So where normally we would say something is equal to or greater than something else, for strings, we need to use dot equals. So the first variable here 
then the second variable here is the parameter. So very similar actually to the exercise we've just done. We're comparing something with the current against the sort of compared, if that makes sense. So with primitive variables such as int, comparing two variables can be done with two equality signs, which are the equal signs. This is because the value of the primitive variable is stored directly in the variables box. The value of reference variables in contrast is an address of the object that is referenced. So the box contains a reference to the memory location. This is because the value of a primitive variable is stored directly in the variables box. The value of a reference variable is in contrast is an address of the object that is referenced. So the box contains a reference to the memory location. Using two equality signs compares the equality of the value stored in the boxes of the variables, whereas with reference variables, such comparisons would examine the quality of the memory references. The method equals is similar to the method toString in respect that it's available for use, even if it has not been defined in the class. The default implementation of this method compares the equality of the references. Let's observe this with the help of the previously written simple date class. So in this example, we've got four variables set up. We can see that first and second are the same data. Third is completely different and fourth is actually pointing to first. So if we have a look at these if statements, we can see here that first dot equals first. Well, we're comparing the first reference object, so it should be true, which we can see here. On the second one, we're comparing first dot equals second. And although they actually have the same data, the reference won't be the same. So they are not equal. Third and fourth, we can see that third and fourth are actually different. So that will be not equal. And then first, sorry, and then fourth is actually pointing to a copy of first. So they are equal to. When you continue with Java, uh, you, you will get a, a better understanding of references and copies and things like that. So this video is about the 30 minute mark. So I'm going to stop it here. I've got the next 20 minutes already recorded and I will finish the rest of this section um, before the upload ready for Thursday. So thank you very much and as always, good luck and happy coding.